Hello, and welcome to another tutorial video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about ambient occlusion and what I'm calling anti-ambient occlusion. But before we get to that second part, we have to talk about what ambient occlusion itself is. Um, it's a technique used in computer graphics, and you'll a lot of times see it in video games as a setting in the video settings of the game. Um, and a lot of times you don't know what all the letters mean for the different versions, and you just kind of select the, the best one because you're hoping for the best quality. But if you're curious about what it actually does, well, here's an example of it. Um, what it does is when two objects are next to each other, so let's say this block and the floor over here, they both ambiently occlude each other. So the block kind of blocks a bit of the floor and it casts a shadow all the way around it um, on the floor. And then the floor also um, ambiently occludes the block itself. And so the block um, gets a bit shaded. So they're both casting shadows onto each other is a way of thinking about it. And we can see this, um, the reverse of it in action over here, if we just lift up the block a bit and no longer is there any ambient occlusion, there's a bit of shadow just from the block being above the ground. You can see that bit of like shadow under there, but the floor is no longer having ambient occlusion applied and the block itself no longer is either. And so if you look at it straight on, you can see that it looks pretty bright. And if you look at it over here, you can see that it's a bit darker. And that's because it's shaded from the floor with ambient occlusion. And something to note, because while I was looking into all of this, I kind of noticed that some sides of blocks look brighter than other sides. And that's, uh, from my investigation, seems to be just depending on the cardinal direction that that block face is on. So north facing ones and south facing ones both are brighter than east facing ones and west facing ones. Um, just a bit of a quirk on how Minecraft shades things because we don't exactly have a complex shading engine over here um, in Minecraft. Uh, but it's just something to think about as we look at faces of blocks being in shade and sometimes it's just depending on the cardinal direction and nothing else. Uh, but if we look over here, we can see a better example of ambient occlusion in action. You can see along all the edges, it gets a bit darker, and that's where ambient occlusion is being applied. Now, this is usually a pretty good thing, and so I would say if this was like a corner of a room, there's no reason to try to get rid of ambient occlusion in this case, right? But there may be some cases where you have corners of blocks touching each other and you don't want that shadow because you want it to look more like a smooth transition instead of a harsh transition that ambient occlusion does. So we're going to talk about a couple techniques of how to do anti-ambient occlusion, which is just my wording of saying getting rid of those shadows. Um, and the first technique you can use is using different blocks that are lighter in the edges where the shadow is to try to brighten up it to make up the fact that it's in shadow. This is something that a lot of builders already do, so it shouldn't be too new of a concept, but it's an interesting idea if you just want to use different block shades to try to get rid of the shadow. And this one does it fairly well. It still looks a bit in shadow. It's kind of hard, um, but I think this is a decent example of showing how shading the different uh, parts of the surface can help with trying to remove the ambient occlusion if that's what you want to do. Um, but there's better ways of doing it, at least I think there's better ways of doing it. And the first other example that we're going to see is with walls. Um, I noticed this in one of BWO's recent videos, or more recent videos. Um, he was building a big dome, he had some walls on top of the dome, and he was talking about how it removed some of the shadows that you could see on the dome. And I was like, oh, that's getting rid of ambient occlusion, that's really cool. Um, if you want it to look smoother. And so here's walls over here. Here's just normal full blocks over there. And you can see that there's ambient occlusion here, but there is no ambient occlusion over here. But there is ambient occlusion along the edges, which is interesting. And we'll get to exactly why that's happening in just a second. But walls are a way that you can kind of try to get rid of it. And we can investigate further why exactly there were shadows along the edges if we make uh, some full blocks over here on this side. And so you can see that there is now ambient occlusion being applied along this part of the wall. But interestingly enough, there is no ambient occlusion on this part of the full blocks. It doesn't look darker over here. And so if we remove the full blocks and we put in just walls, you can see it goes back to no shadow, right? 
and we put the blocks back over here and you can see that there is now shadow again on those wall blocks. And the reasoning is, is that full blocks cast ambient occlusion shadows onto the blocks adjacent to it, right? But walls, which are not full blocks, do not cast shadows onto the blocks adjacent. So these ones aren't getting cast any shadows, but these ones are because of how they affect each other. And so with this in mind, I created a bit of a weird example where these two sides look like they're essentially made from the same blocks. They're not, we'll get to that. But one has no ambient occlusion and one does have ambient occlusion. And you might be able to guess how I'm doing this by what I was talking about over there. But the key is, is that these are not all full blocks. A lot of these are stairs, or at least in the, the corners where the, the ambient occlusion would be calculated, I guess you could say. And so it's removing that calculation, and so there's no longer any shadows being applied along this whole edge. Um, there's also stairs in the floor, but something interesting is that if we remove one of these blocks, you can see that the shadows all of a sudden came back along this whole bottom edge. So we remove it, it's there, place it back, there isn't. And so there seems to be some cases where if that gap in the stair block is not fully covered, um, it still applies ambient occlusion, but when it is fully covered, it doesn't. But it only happens in some cases because these ones aren't like fully covered up. We didn't do this or anything, uh, but the ambient occlusion is still gone. And so I'm not quite sure what decides um, if it needs to be covered up or not. Maybe someone in the comments can figure it out, you know, someone that wants to actually go into the game code or something, that'd be kind of interesting. But you just kind of have to finagle with it if you're trying to actually get rid of the, the shadows. Um, but these have all been pretty bad examples of why you would want to use anti-ambient occlusion, because corners of rooms, I think, should have shadow in them. So let me show you an example that might actually be applicable for this technique. So if you had watched my previous tutorial, this build is probably pretty familiar. Um, it's my museum build where I did my uh, anti-aliasing technique, different than what we're talking about here, um, and I was showing it off on the dome. So we've got the two examples from that video. We have the anti-aliasing version and we have the default version that has nothing applied to it, right? Um, and now we have a new version over here that's like the default version, so no anti-aliasing being applied to it but we removed all the shadows. We're doing the anti-ambient occlusion. And so if you look at it straight on, you can't even tell that they're made of different blocks. There are some little shadows right there and right there, but for the most part, it is totally gone. And if we actually get up close with the blocks, you can see that they're all stairs. They've got the little holes, you know, where the like the curved part of the stairs is on this side. So the outside looks exactly the same as the normal version, but the inside looks a lot different. And I also had to put blocks along the whole interior, covering up all the stairs to actually make it uh, the anti-ambient occlusion apply correctly, which is sort of the weird quirk that we were talking about over there. And so this is, I don't know if I really like it, this is a place where you could use it because domes are meant to be smooth, right? They're not meant to be you know, made out of blocks. That's not how domes are in real life. Um, so this would make sense if you're trying to make something as realistic as possible, but it almost takes away from some of the Minecrafty flair um, and it makes it look a little weird. So it's kind of up to your opinion on if you actually want to do this. But now that I'm telling you how to do it, now you know how to. But if you're curious of what it would look like if we not only apply the anti-ambient occlusion, but also the anti-aliasing at the same time, well, this is what it looks like over here. So the anti-aliasing is smoothing out the edges of what you see. And because of how I applied it, it doesn't matter what way you look at it. It's always smoothing it out. Um, but now also the front of it, where you used to see a bunch of shadows of blocks and stuff, isn't there anymore. So it's applying two techniques to make it look as smooth as I can think to make it. I don't know how to make it any more smooth than I have at this state. Um, and if we do a bit of a comparison, so here is the original version with nothing being applied. Here is the version with anti-ambient occlusion being applied. Here is the version with anti-aliasing being applied. And then here's the version with both techniques being applied at once. Um, here, let me get rid of my 
hot bar and stuff, and we can actually go between the just anti-aliasing one and the one with also anti-ambient occlusion, because I think these are the two sort of best ones for what I would consider the best. Um, I currently have this version of the build where it just has anti-aliasing in my survival world, but I'm thinking of changing it over to the anti-ambient occlusion, but I'm also not quite sure because it looks a lot less Minecrafty. So it's like, is it better? Is it not? Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is a bit of a weird technique where I don't know exactly how many places it can really be applied to without it looking too weird, but it's something to add to your tool belt. So in the future, if you ever do come across the case where you're like, man, I really hate those shadows in between blocks and you want to get rid of them, well, now you know how to. And with that, I will see you all next time.